Today, we're embarking on a deep dive into one of physics' most uh, beautiful and, let's be honest, frustrating concepts, quantum spin. Right. The moment you hear the word, you, know, you picture this tiny electron spinning away like a miniature top. But our sources say that's completely wrong. It is. That classical picture is probably the biggest barrier to understanding. While the name is suggestive, quantum spin is absolutely not a physical rotation. And we know this because why? Well, if you try to make the math work to generate the magnetic moment we actually observe, the surface of that little hypothetical spinning electron would have to move um, much, much faster than the speed of light. Right, which is just impossible. So, okay. okay, if it's not spinning, what on earth is it? Our sources are really clear on this. It's intrinsic angular momentum. The key word there is intrinsic. Okay. It's a fundamental property of the particle, just like its mass or its charge. It's something the electron is, not something it does. So we can't really visualize it. So it's a number in the mass. Precisely. It exists entirely in the math of the quantum world. And the first sort of undeniable proof of this came from the stern gerlach experiment back in 1922. That's the one where they shot a beam of silver atoms through a magnetic field, right? Exactly, through a non-uniform magnetic field. Now, if spin were just a random physical rotation, you would think the atoms would be deflected all over the place. You get a continuous smear on the target screen. A blur. A blur, exactly. But that's not what they saw. Instead, the beam split cleanly, distinctly, into just two points, up or down. Wow, nothing in between. Nothing in between. And that was it. That proved the property was strictly quantized. It could only have these two discrete values. Even Wolfgang Pauli called it a non-classically describable duality. He was basically saying, just accept it. This is a purely quantum thing. You got it. And this split, this quantization, it serves as this great cosmic divider. It separates all particles into two huge families. Okay, so tell us about those two families. On one side, you have the fermions. They have half integer spin values, like one half. These are your electrons, protons, neutrons. I mean, the actual building blocks of matter. The stuff that makes up well less. Yes. Yeah. And on the other side, you have the bosons with integer spin like zero or one. These are the force messengers, the particles that carry light and the nuclear forces. And this spin value dictates their whole personality almost, their social character. A great way to put it, Fermions are fiercely individualistic. They obey what's called Pauli's exclusion principle. Which means? It means two identical fermions cannot, under any circumstances, occupy the same quantum state. And this one abstract rule is responsible for the solidity of the entire universe. Wait, hold on. So the fact that I can't push my hand through this table right now, mm -hmm. that's not just atoms pushing back. It's because of this abstract quantum rule. That is the fundamental reason. Without that rule, all the electrons in an atom would just collapse into the lowest energy shell, one on top of the other. There'd be no structure, no chemistry. No chemistry at all. It's this quantum pressure that gives matter its form. OK, so this is all very abstract. But there has to be a tangible link to our world. How do we even measure it? We do, through magnetism. A charged particle with spin acts exactly like a tiny, unbelievably powerful compass needle. That's our handle on it. And that's where quantum electrodynamics, or QED, comes in. Mm -hmm. That theory has had incredible success. Staggering success. QED can predict the electron's magnetic moment to an accuracy of one part in a billion. It's one of the most precise theories in all of science. And that precision lets us find things that are hidden. Absolutely. Like with the neutron. A neutron is neutral. It has no charge. But it has a magnetic moment. How was that possible? Well, that was a huge clue that it wasn't an elementary particle. It told us there must be charged things moving around inside it. Yeah. And there were quarks. Just when I think it can't get any stranger, our sources bring up these 720 degree rotations. Yes. If I rotate this cup 360 degrees, it's back to where it started. Simple. But an electron isn't. That's correct. You rotate an electron 360 degrees, and its mathematical description, its wave function, is inverted. It's out of phase with where it started. You have to turn it twice. You have to turn it twice. Two full rotations, 720 degrees, to bring it back to its initial state. This tells us the mathematical objects describing spin, called spinors, live in a much richer, stranger geometric reality than our familiar 3D world. So to wrap this up, we have spin 12 fermions, the building blocks of matter, forced to take up space, and spin 1 bosons, the messengers of the forces, holding it all together. That's a perfect summary. But here's a final thought for you to chew on. We know from Einstein that gravity isn't a force like the others. It's the curvature of space-time. 
It is geometry. Right. Theory predicts that the particle that carries gravity, the graviton, must have spin too. So the question is, what kind of reality, what kind of cosmic architecture is created by a fundamental particle that is itself defined by spin too? 